thank you. Thank you for this presentation. I'm uh, really glad to be here as well. So, um, while uh, children's literature often offers escapist narratives, many authors have observed that it's difficult to keep politics and social issues in a world reality out of the books for the young audience, as already observed by Mickenberg and Nell. If, in some cases, analogies to reality play a minor role, in other publications such links are highlighted and the readers are clearly invited to reflect on concrete problems. Just think about the debate about character representation and character role in the 70s, as I remember it by Sarland or about overly socially engaged books published in that period following the cultural impact of social protest movements. And, of course, many politically engaged books are published nowadays, as observed by Mickenberg and Nell. Focusing on a literature for younger children published in the last decade, as well as on incentives and disincentives for writing, publishing, and distributing this literature, we argue here that the children's literature, as well as being a tool of embarrassment, has been and continues to be an important vehicle for ideas that challenge the status quo and promote social justice, environmental stewardship, and greater acceptance of differences. If some of the socially conscious books published in past decades lacked the elements of quality literature that children would want to read over and over again, as observed by Sepp, referring to the case of queer books, if some similar contemporary titles have been criticized for the scarce aesthetic value, as noted by Ben Rozzoli. On the contrary, this paper will explore the case of two high-quality feminist picture books, socially engaged and aesthetically pleasant at the same time. Ciao Bambola, Hello Doll, 1978, and Cara Violetta, mini drama dei nostri tempi difficili, Dear Violet, mini drama of our hard times, 1982. Written by Adela Turin and published by her Italian feminist publishing house, Dalla parte delle bambine. While they present evident differences, in Ciao Bambola, the main character, a little girl named Giovanna, gets a gift with a beautiful left side dance, while Cara Violetta is a slice of life of Violetta. An elegant and frivolous sentience, like Illid. Purple shoes. The books display strong similarities and overlapping themes. Both, for example, are arguably the picture books published by Turin the most connected to 1780s realities. They are not fairy tales with anthropomorphized animals, such as the famous Rosa Confetto. Neither stories with the princesses and witches, such as the adventures of Azolina. Set in a contemporary at Turin's time houses, they observe and criticize the sexist education given to children, especially through toys and clothes. Nonetheless, in order to better tackle this complicated issue and offer memorable readings, they also utilize surreal elements, which evoke curiosity and pleasure in reading. As a matter of fact, the two books utilize the same strategy, even if in different ways, living, talking objects. Before analyzing those picture books, a few words to better understand Dalla parte delle bambine, on the side of little girls, the first Italian publishing house for feminist children's literature. Active in Milan from 1975 to 1982, it was founded and directed by Adela Turin, who wrote or edited most of the books. Turin was a scholar as well and studied carefully many gender issues in picture books. 
Despite its short life, Dalla Parte delle Bambine and its feminist picture books had a great success, especially in Italy, France and Spain. Thousands and thousands of copies sold, the price of natural newspapers such as Le Monde, translation into more than 10 languages, new edition since 1999. Some of those titles are still on sale today. For example, Candy Pink, translated in 2016 by Nube Ocho, especially for American readers. Beyond their interest as overtly engaged the feminist stories, Peter Thoris commended the artistic quality of the books, monitored by Tour Surf, art historian and textile designer. Dalla parte dei bambini published brave original books, was socially engaged and was willing to take creative risks, qualities often commended in the best independent publishers. Turing books were praised for their beautiful pictures and refined text. But they also had concrete and urgent purposes. The author wanted to speak to mothers and to their daughters and sons, with the aim to give tools to improve women's conditions. As she answers in an interview, most of all, we would like those books to serve as a tool for mothers to open a dialogue with their daughters so that the girls won't end up tomorrow at the same point as women are today. This and following Italian and French quotes will be translated by me. Coming back to Ciao Gambra and the Caravilletta, this paper will focus on some common aspects as well as on their interweaving between factual and fictional elements, starting with the theme of the doll. As a matter of fact, talking dolls are present in both books and they are presented in a negative way. In Chambambola, the blonde real size doll is revealed to be a nightmarish object. I think capable of coming to life and stealing the place of Giovanna, now directed to being a puppet. Thus, Giovanna, while showing interest in reflective activities such as reading and preferring a comfortable cloth, is vulnerable to the lure of a toy. She too would like to have perfect, bland, curly hair. Although the doll warns her that she will have to spend hours styling it with colors and whatnot. The pretty niece, even after the recommendation that she will no longer be able to run and jump and will have to rub creams on her legs. The pretty dress, with which she will no longer be able to move freely. Only uh, once Giovanna has become a doll and the puppet has taken her place, leaving her alone, the little girl realizes her mistake and wakes up crying for, for, from the nightmare, her mother ready to comfort her. Fortunately, the dream doesn't become a reality. Her aunt and uncle have brought a welcome gift of, of a bicycle, with which Giovanna rides to the park with her mother. The young protagonist may appear overly vulnerable to the doll, but it's clear that this is but a symbol of all the social conditioning inculcated in the little girls. In Cara Violetta, on the other hand, the doll Fiorella is a navy puppet who is under the illusion that Ferruccio, the little boy who lives in the house, really loves her. It's very rare to meet literature boys who enjoy playing with dolls. The most famous example is probably William's Doll by Zorotov. Unlike this groundbreaking tale, where William's desire to play with a doll is praised by the narration supported by his grandmother and finally accepted by his father, here Turing shows it in an ambiguous way. If Ferruccio's playing with a female toy is not condemned, on the other hand, the child is described as a miniature womanizer who deludes his toys without keeping his promises. Not coincidentally, Turin uses terms from the romantic lexicon, such as love and crush. 
Fiorella's first lines are very clear about this. Ferruccio loves me and I love him, but we have to keep our love hidden, our families opposite. Some years earlier, also Gianni Rodari, one of the most influential Italian children's literature writers, awarded with Hans Christian Andersen Prize in 1970, had addressed the theme of the doll as a sexy toy, creating in the short story the transistor doll an irreverent and creative feminist doll who doesn't play with teacups but instead wants to play with race cars and the skittles. In the end, the doll's free spiritedness will prove valuable to her young owner, Enrica. At first fearful and hesitant, she too will eventually decide to abandon a washing machine toy and go play in the street with other children. According to Camarda, this short story is a real proto-feminist essay. Then again, feminists had a lot to say about dolls. Already in 1973, Belotti wrote in her inflation essay, Alla parte dei bambine, that the dolls were for little girls, while stuffed animals were for little boys. And a bit further on, some mothers, particularly aware of the conditioning to which children are subjected from birth in the name of male and female roles, and determined to change this reality, have, okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> have uh, avoided offering dolls to their daughters, preferring instead to give them stuffed animals. It's not little girls who should not should be taken away from the dolls, but on the contrary, dolls should be offered to little boys as well. At the same time, fathers should take better care and more closely of their children of both sexes since their very first days in order to give them a real and not at all scandalous image of effective interchangeability of father-mother roles and offer them a model of male tenderness. With these very modern reflections, Belotti doesn't so much disapprove of the doll, a toy that can teach the values of care and tenderness, as she criticizes its use imposing it on little girls and banning it from little boys. The problem of the ubiquity of dolls and virtually inextricably of pink, a lifestyle rather than mm -hmm. a color, evidently continues to this day. Recently, a Batecola observed in Pink is the New Black that there is a huge, huge distinction between dolls and action figures, respectively, and never ever interchangeably male and female toys. And in this regard, the ongoing popularity of dolls for little girls is certified once again by the huge success of the recent movie Barbie centered on one of the most famous dolls. In this context, the fact that Turin presents a doll that is appreciated by a little boy and ignored by her sister, as well as a little girl who prefers a bicycle to a doll, is certainly groundbreaking. Dolls, of course, are but one aspect of a larger issue of sexism in part its children through toys. Indeed, Turin is well aware of the enormous impact of toys on the imagination and the development of children. Thus, the author highlights the importance of not sexist toys. And so, Giovanna can go to the park with her new bicycle instead of contemplating the doll, while Marianna playing with her airplane, dreams of becoming a pilot and traveling all around the world. Another common aspect of the two books is the fact that there aren't antagonists. There aren't chauvinist husbands, violent kings, or aggressive fathers. The enemy is straightforwardly the sexist education instilled in children, 
when a relationship don't require a character to be a symbol of it. As a matter of fact, in various picture books of Turin, the real antagonists, alongside unpleasant chauvinist men, were the sexist social norms of the patriarchy, and not rarely the happy endings included men changing for the better and becoming part of the new harmonious women-led society. Concerning the setting, both propose realistic contemporary houses, but these are deeply different. Giovanna lives with her single mother in a city flat, a most audacious choice in Italy's and France's 70s, while mm. Cara Violetta is set in a middle-class house. Regarding the Cara Violetta, the shoes can tell us a lot about the human characters who never appear in the page, and this helps to create a surreal aura. The mother who wears uncomfortable and frivolous high-heeled shoes and the father who uses serious moccasins seem set in traditional stereotypical beliefs, while the children appear receptive to change. Ferruccio plays with the doll, while Marianna refuses the uncomfortable, cute, feminine shoes and wants to run freely. One more thing about the shoes. Alongside the various footwear, there are also old slippers that represent elderly feminist women and praise Marianna's choice to refuse uncomfortable shoes. The self-irony of the author is evident Vecchie ciabatte, old slippers, is a familiar term to mean elderly women. The last aspect that I would like to focus on is the peculiar use of the text. Instead of using caption and traditional text, the author uses comic bubbles. Of course, these are picture books, not comics, but depicting characters' lines, lines in this way is very innovative and creates a sense of immediacy. In addition to this, the living object and the talking animals are not anthropomorphic, as it was the case in the first books of the publishing house. This choice helps to reinforce the sense of reality of the books. In conclusion, these books present an interesting union of surreal and real elements, single mothers and talking dolls, the problem of sexist toys and feminist slippers that long for the days of street demonstrations. This is common in various books written by Turing, but in those cases the fact is different. Cara Violetta and Chan Bambola are much more grounded in reality, more direct in their feminist messages. The anthropomorphic animal metaphor is easily dissolved. There are no princes or to save or cruel kings to defeat. These books frankly show the truth. Dalla parte delle bambine is a feminist militant publishing house and it deals with the unconventional insurgent stories and characters. Through its picture books, Dalla parte dei bambine aims to tackle sexism in society in order to actively better girls' and women's positions. In Chabambra and Cara Violetta, as well as in many other books, Turin deals with factual, urgent issues the education given to girls and boys, the rampant sexism in the middle-class houses, the pernicious allure, allures of advertisement, the danger of chauvinist toys, and the pressure of the traditional family. And not only she criticizes such problems, she also offers scenes of great importance in a multitude of little girls dressed in pink, obediently playing with dolls, Giovanna riding her bicycle to the park instead of being enchanted by the doll, and Marianna rejecting the uncomfortable shoes to play free with her airplane, dreaming of becoming a pilot, are certainly unconventional and emancipatory images 
which retain a remarkable progressive energy even, even today. Thank you for your attention. I leave my contacts and some references. I would be happy to ask for any question later. Thank you very much. <laughs>